Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian, and we are getting close to the Belmont Stakes and the festival. The final leg of the Triple Crown comes to New York, but aside from all that, we got 10 probables for the Belmont Stakes. And it's a much better quality field than the Preakness. Yeah, I think I think you're right there, Matt. It it it, it almost had to be better than the Preakness in my <laughs> eyes, and it and it certainly is. We're going to focus on the Belmont Stakes today, folks. We're going to talk a little bit more about a few other races and the Belmont. More about the Belmont next week, but this week is all about the Belmont. Here's our cover boy. His name, of course, is Forte. Matt. He has been away for a long time. He certainly has. Um, so this is a big test for Forte um, in the Belmont Stakes as Todd Pletcher goes for his fifth victory in the Belmont Stakes. He certainly knows how to get horses ready for this big race. Forte is one of four great stakes winners for grade one winners in this Belmont Stakes field. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Now, let's take a look at the field. We're looking at a field of 10 right now. There you see Forte as the probable early favorite. I rat Ortiz, Todd Pletcher. And when I said he's been away for a while, yeah, sort of. He's been away 10 weeks. That's, uh, that's, that's not the way most horses usually come into the Belmont. Uh, I, I think we were saying the same thing about confidence game before the Derby. And it wasn't, of course, planned. Forte scratched out of the Derby, Matt. Scratched out of the preakness, uh, or forced to scratch out of both races, I should say, with a small bruise on his hoof. Uh, still the champion, the two-year-old champion. Won a lot of big races last year. Did everything right early this year. The Fountain of Youth and the Florida Derby winner. Ten weeks off. Now he's going a mile and a half at Belmont. Yeah, that certainly has to be a concern in most cases. And here, maybe not quite as much with uh, Pletcher being so adept at getting horses ready for uh, the test of the champion. Yeah, and, and if you're like me and you still think that Forte is probably the best three-year-old in the country right now, the Belmont Stakes, 10-horse field, those, that big racetrack, mile and a half, usually, more often than not, it's a race that can point out the best horse in the race. So Forte a deserving favorite, even off the break. Second choice early on here, Matt, is Angel of Empire. And, and I'll ask you this question. What has Angel of Empire done wrong in his last, oh, three starts or so? Um, very little, Brian. Um, you know, and Angel of Empire, uh, highlighting, again, the quality of this field uh, is one of four horses from the Kentucky Derby that have come back to run in the Belmont Stakes. And, and they all ran well in the Belmont. They finished from third to eighth place. Angel of Empire, of course, uh, was making up ground nicely to finish third uh, in the uh, Kentucky Derby. And, um, you know, uh, uh, his races leading up to the Derby were very good also. Yeah, absolutely. Those wins in the Risen Star at Fairgrounds. The Arkansas Derby at Oakland Park, impressive victories for the son of classic empire. One of three here trained by Brad Cox, Matt. And, and you said they all ran well in the Kentucky Derby, some better than others, because I think clearly of the four horses coming out of the Kentucky Derby, Angel of Empire was the best. He was also the race favorite, uh, lest we forget, Matt. He was the favorite in the Kentucky Derby. And yeah, Mage kind of got it to jump on him, pinned him down on the inside coming out of the turn. And that uh, quicker move by Mage, they were kind of together there on the turn, was the de real decider. Angel of Empire ran really well down the stretch to be a good third in the Kentucky Derby. And I think he's obviously a major contender here in the Belmont Stakes. By the way, that trend of not running in the Preakness, running in the Kentucky Derby has been a good one of late, Matt. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and also, you know... Uh, Angel of Empire is trained by Brad Cox, and Brad Cox is one is one of the tra seven trainers in the Belmont Stakes field who is a past winner of the Belmont. Of course, Brad Cox did it a couple years ago with Essential Quality. Essential Quality was a good one, and that was a good Belmont. He could do it again here with Angel of Empire 
or one of his two other horses, Matt, as we get back to the field. Uh, that same trend of running in the Derby, skipping the Preakness uh, is true for the third choice on our morning line. That's Tapit Trice. Tapit Trice, of course, was the horse that was closest to Angel of Empire in the betting in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, earlier, I said that, uh, yeah, maybe they all ran pretty well in the Derby, but certainly some better than others. Angel of Empire was better than Tapit Trice. Tapit Trice was kind of stuck down on the inside and then swung out wide. And by the time he had clear running, he was really not into the Kentucky Derby. Luis Saez, I don't think, pushed him too hard after realizing he had no shot to win. He loped up for seventh in that Kentucky Derby, but it was a bit of a disappointment for sure. But uh, things might set up better for the son of top in the Belmont Stakes. Yeah, could be, uh, Brian. And, and, of course, he ended up finishing seventh in the Kentucky Derby, and he went into the Derby with a night, with a victory in the bluegrass stakes and i think it's worth pointing out now that as a son of tappet tappet trice um how well tappet's offspring have done in the belmont stakes recently there was actually a very nice article in horse racing nation recently about the success of the sons of tappet if you didn't take a look at it go back and see it a lot of interesting charts and comparisons in there um uh about the success of tappets in the uh, belmont and so here it is it's the todd pletcher factor it's the tappet factor and, and maybe not the best of trips in the derby yeah yeah he wasn't one of the best horses for me in the derby the trip yeah yeah he he could have done more without fast pace and he really didn't but everything points to tappet tries bouncing back the winner of the tampa bay derby and the bluegrass uh, he's got the Tappet factor. A bunch of recent Tappets have, have won the Belmont. He's got the Pletcher factor. A bunch of recent Pletchers have won the Belmont. So in, in a way, Tappet Trice, again, skipping the Preakness coming out of the Derby, has uh, has a lot going for him as he runs on that uh, that big track at Belmont Park. Uh, uh, probably a good place, a smaller field for that big son of Tappet to unwind and run his best in the Belmont. Getting back to the morning line, I think the fourth choice uh, needs no introduction after the Preakness, Matt. Uh, that is national treasure. The Preakness winner wheels right back three weeks later in the Belmont Stakes. Johnny V will be up again. Bob Baffert's the trainer, Matt. And once again, I look for national treasure to look for the early lead. Yeah, and and you know it, it, it's a thing right now, Johnny V, uh, uh, on these Baffert horses that like to run uh, uh, forwardly. Johnny V has been just a great uh, uh, match with those kind of horses, but I don't know, Brian. Uh, his victory in the Preakness didn't really change my feeling about that horse. We've talked about the the quality of the Preakness field. And sure, it's great to get a victory in a, a triple crown race. And it was national treasures first stakes victory uh, also. But, but to me, I don't know. Uh, uh, the biggest thing he has going for him again is that he will be on the lead. And, and that is a good place to be in the Belmont stakes. Yeah. And, and he also looks like a horse who likes to run on. He doesn't, uh, doesn't like to throw in the towel, even beaten in the Santa Anita Derby in a race he probably needed. Uh, he he was running on well in the stretch, although be it uh, albeit in fourth place. But he's a horse who certainly finished that Preakness off well as Blazing Sevens gave him all he wanted down the stretch of Pimlico. All right, Matt, looking uh, now, I, I think we have a separation after the top four, and then we could probably call the rest of the field long shots, although we do have Archangelo. At eight to one, Matt, he's a developing son of Arrogate. And, and I, I was pretty impressed with his win in the Peter Pan, certainly against lesser competition than he'll see here in the Belmont and a far different distance, of course. But those last two wins, uh, one going back to Gulfstream Park and then the Peter Pan, where he was really gained those last hundred yards. He, he looks like a developing horse. If he could take another step forward, why not Archangelo? Yeah, I, I agree with what you said, Brian, and and it's a good story. It, it's it's nice to see a lower profile veteran trainer like Jenna Antonucci, a very very good trainer who doesn't get horses of this quality very often, 
to get a nice stakes win in the Peter Pan. And then, you know, like you said, maybe uh, a contender if he can take another step forward uh, uh, next weekend. Yeah, yeah. Bishop's Bay, uh, Bishop's Bay was full of run down the stretch, and uh, Archangelo really had to work to get that win over the track in the Peter Pan. So uh, maybe the fifth choice, another horse that could be uh, contesting for fifth choice, is the second Brad Cox we're going to mention. That, that's Hit Show. Hit Show, uh, nice winner of the Withers, probably didn't beat a lot. I, I thought the Wood Memorial was a little weak, but I thought he was the best horse. He had some trouble there and just missed. And then he did not run a bad Kentucky Derby at all, considering the early pace. Yeah, absolutely. The fifth place finish in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, you know, horses that run that well in the Derby tend to go on and do good things later in the year. I don't know if it's going to be uh, in the Belmont Stakes, but this horse twice has shown an affinity for the New York type racing surfaces. Yeah, he, he, um, wasn't as good as the top three in, in the Kentucky Derby, but considering that fast pace, uh, other than two fills, Hit Show was the only horse that was really pretty close to that fast pace in the Kentucky Derby that stayed on, and he stayed on for fifth. So a good showing by Hit Show, and his past performances are pretty much uh, full of good performances. So maybe a cut below the favorites we've talked about, but Hit Show certainly one to think about in the Belmont. Uh, other ones, probably more longer shots than, than we've mentioned so far, Matt. Red Route 1, Steve Asmussen, fourth in the Preakness. Preakness did not set up for him well. He was much closer to the pace than he's ever been before. I don't know if that helped or hurt, but he was uh, fourth best in the Preakness. Yeah, I, I, I think we might have the same kind of scenario here where they are going to be concerned about getting too far behind with a horse that prior to the Preakness, that was his style. He was a legitimate deep closer and ran good races as a deep closer, but they knew that, you know, uh, he if he got too far behind uh, in the Preakness that he wasn't going to have a shot. And usually when you force a horse like that out of that running style, it doesn't work out well. So I guess a fourth in the Preakness was okay. But, um, you know, to me, it seems like they've got the same kind of decision to make in the Belmont Stakes. Do they let him get far back and make a run or do they try and stay closer? Yeah. I, you know, Red Rock won. He didn't have the pace set up that he wanted in the Preakness, but he was very close as they straightened out. Uh, you know, if, if you're just looking at the, uh, the quarter pole shot red route one has a shot to win and he was only fourth best coming down the lane now of course the national treasurer and blazing sevens who had made a pretty early move had uh had, had the advantage of running so slow early but red route one certainly another one to consider and he's always uh, a horse who's uh vying at least for a, a lower spot in the exacts looking back at a race uh, uh a smaller race. Uh, it was a prep for the Preakness, actually called the Bathhouse Row at Oakland Park. Matt Red Route One nailed a horse called Tappet Shoes on the wire, and I thought both horses ran very well that day at Oakland Park. Tappet Shoes is a well, he's Brad Cox trained. He's the third Brad Cox trainee we're talking about, but he is also a son of Tappet, and he just looks. He, he was no great shakes a while back, but he looks to be getting better with each and every start coming off that nice race. At Oaklawn, he's had some more time to develop for Cox. Tappet Shoes, kind of an interesting long shot for me. Yeah, I think definitely a long shot to consider and and uh, uh, maybe a long shot to use in uh, uh, underneath in some Belmont wagers. Like you said, Brian, you've got the Tappet factor. You've got the Brad Cox factor, past Belmont Stakes winner. So, you know, uh, there are some things that make Tappet Shoes uh, uh, worth considering as he's going to be a big price too. Big price and kind of an up and coming horse in my eyes, Matt. Uh, who else we have? R Ray's Kane, the Gotham winner. He won that Gotham at big odds. Didn't quite get it done in the Bluegrass or the Kentucky Derby. He didn't run terrible in, e uh, in either. But um, I wonder if Ray's Kane coming back to New York again, I could see why they're giving it another shot off that Gotham win. But uh, 
the bluegrass and the Kentucky Derby don't make me think that Ray's King can all of a sudden become a classic winner. Yeah, but I'll, but to his credit, Brian, I actually thought an eighth place finish in the Kentucky Derby was a lot better than what I expected. Yeah, no, I won't argue that with you, Matt. Eighth was better than uh, we expected, but uh, still more work to do, I think, for Ray's Kane. All right, the last horse on that list, Matt, was Il Miracola, trained by Antonio Sano. I, I often like Antonio Sano trained horses, Matt, but I don't know if I can recommend this one, although he is coming off a win last time at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel the same way, but I, I guess a nice allowance win last month at Gulfstream Park uh, uh, is a positive because certainly uh, his series of stakes races prior to that were there was not much to like. Not good enough against the likes of uh, Forte, for instance, down in some of those Gulfstream Park stakes where Il Miracola was uh, was uh, also ran, if you will, Matt. All right, we want to look at this pace a little bit, and I think this is part of the story. I, I think there are going to be decisions uh, needed to be made by trainers and jockeys in, in race. But one thing seems likely, Matt, National Treasure, if he wants it, he should be able to get that early lead. Yeah, I agree, and, and I can't imagine uh, that anything will happen differently than that scenario because they're going to look at the field and they're going to look at the replays and the PPs just like we did, Brian, and say, hey, let them come catch us. Yeah, that, that's got to be the, uh, the, the thing going in for National Treasure. How long can we take it? How much can Johnny V, kind of a master at doing it, by the way, how much can he slow down that early pace? I, I feel like there's enough good horses, though, Matt, here where they know that National Treasure is a threat and they don't want to let him get another 113 and four or so and have such an easy time of it as he did in the Preakness, which is three sixteenths of a mile in a different track, uh, uh, shorter in a different track than the Belmont Stakes, of course. But National Treasure, we fully expect him to be out on the lead. Then you look at the horses that might be closest early and, and they're question marks really, because a lot of them are horses that have rallied in many of their races, but hit show certainly showed more speed last time in the Kentucky Derby. Tap and shoes has the ability to be close. Il Miracola was really never close at any stage in those Gulfstream park stakes, but he did wire that allowance race and maybe even Archangelo is an, is another horse who could be closer than we would suspect in a race without a ton of speed. And with Brad Cox having three horses in this field, you got to feel like the instructions to either hit show or tap at shoes is to be more forwardly placed. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and I think you, Il Miracola coming off that uh, wired allowance win at Gulfstream Park, it makes sense for him to be in the race early. They don't want to lag back in fifth or sixth in a mile and a half race. So that's why we ended up with the stalkers, as you will, there. Hit Show, Tapachus, Il Miracola, all horses who could have a knife, enough early speed to it make, at least make national treasure uh, not just be alone loping on the lead in the Belmont Stakes. In mid-pack, we, uh, we have our favorite, Matt, uh, Forte. And it's interesting because I think of the three favorites uh, that are going to have to run down National Treasure at some point, if I had to guess, Forte has the most tactical speed. He hasn't always showed it. He didn't really show it in the Florida Derby, for instance. But I think if you look at his uh, past performances from, from start to finish, Forte probably has shown more tactical speed than either Tapich Rice or Angel of Empire. Yeah, I think that's true. And, and certainly, Brian, you know, uh, if National Treasure gets out on the lead, Johnny V is not going to want him out there setting a really fast pace, which is, you know, going to make it easier for a horse like Forte that has some tactical speed to stay within contact, to stay in the kind of position that he has been successful in in the past. Right. And I think uh, conversely, Irad Ortiz knows that uh, uh, national treasure is not to be ignored. And Forte, if Forte is a lot of people thinking the best horse in this race, I think Irad Ortiz uh, we'll be thinking that Forte will not be as far back as he's been in some of his recent wins. So look for Forte to be a little bit more forwardly placed in this 12 for long Belmont. 
I think the same could be said for a long shot in Ray's Cane. Ray's Cane's been a little too far out of it, probably, in races like the Bluegrass and the uh, it worked in the Gotham, the one turn Gotham, but I think he was too far back in the in, in the Bluegrass and the Kentucky Derby. I would expect him to show a little bit more early pace. That leaves uh, three pretty big late runners there, Matt. And, and again, you know, Red Route won to a point we already talked about, but also Tap and Trice and Angel of Empire. I don't think they want to be lagging 10, 12 lengths back in this Belmont Stakes. Yeah, and, and like I said before when I was talking about Forte, um, if the pace is not that fast uh, uh, out front, it will be easier for those late runners to to be a little bit closer. The pack of horses will tend to be uh, uh, less spread out. Yeah, and that's often what we see in this Belmont Stakes when they try to, uh, the front runners try not to go too fast early. Uh, we see horses that used to be farther back, uh, uh, a little bit closer to the pace. I, I, I think that certainly Tapit Trice and Angel of Empire are two colts of class who have shown just enough in their past performances to think that they can be at least a little closer to the pace than they were, say, in the Kentucky Derby. Tapit Trice is a good example, uh, a smaller field, a bigger track here. He was uh, much more involved in the bluegrass by the time they were on the turn top and trice was looking like a winner in the bluegrass in the kentucky derby he never looked like a horse very involved angel of empire probably the same thing matt what do you think yeah i think so brian um you know that's one of the things that makes the belmont stakes so different is the mile and a half uh, track with those big, wide, sweeping turns, which make it very easy to, for horses to, or easier for horses to maintain a steady kind of pace. They don't have to alter their stride to deal with tighter turns. They can just just keep going around those big, wide turns. Yeah, absolutely. Matt, uh, it's time to talk about what we're thinking, at least, uh, where where are we, nine days out from the Belmont Stakes? At least what we're thinking as far as top contenders. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the Pletcher duo, and maybe Tapich Rice is uh, likely to be my top, top contender at this point, hopefully as the third choice. How about you? Yeah, I, I certainly am leaning towards the, the two Pletchers and, of course, uh, uh, Angel of Empire. Yeah, those three, uh, maybe the class of the race, look like the class of the race, even though there's a Preakness winner uh, looming there as the probable fourth choice in the Belmont. How about some long shots? Uh, I, you know, we both said this is a much better field than the Preakness, and the Preakness certainly did not work out for long shots, especially with the way the pace unfolded, Matt. But maybe the Belmont is a, is a better race. Uh, we seem to be on the same top choices, but maybe a better race to get a price at least into the trifecta. Where are you? Who's your top long shot right now? Hey, and Brian, we've seen some bombs win the Belmont Stakes uh, uh, in the last 10, 15, 20 years. So it, it's, not un it, it's not impossible for that, uh, for that to happen. And certainly uh, in terms of the, uh, the long shots, you know, we talked about uh, Archangelo, you know, can he take another step forward um, and 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 be a contender? Hit show um, uh, with the fifth place finish in the Derby, going a mile and a quarter, and 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 Capuchus is going to have some big odds that that make him worth uh, considering. I, I, I think you know if you're looking uh, to to get a price into the trifecta or the superfecta. Uh, you probably want to be using these guys. So yeah, these are these are our agreed upon three top long shots. We like these three better than the the other three that would be uh, fall into the long shot category uh, in the Belmont. Archangelo and Hitcho, we both talked about as maybe being able to stay a little bit closer to the pace. Archangelo, uh, a, a developing horse, a developing son of Arrogate. If he can get that distance, that bump up from the one turn nine furlong Peter Pan. Could be a dangerous horse, especially if he's uh, uh, pretty close to the early pace, I think. Same thing about Hit Show. He's got that nice pattern for a top trainer. 
of uh, 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 coming to the Kentucky Derby, running a decent race, skipping the Preakness, and now coming back for the Belmont. He, too, as we talked about, might be early. And my real bomb, I, I like Top and Shoes quite a, a lot, uh, Matt. I think he's a horse who has literally gotten better with each and every start. Go back and look at that bath uh, bathhouse rose stakes at uh, Oakland Park because I think Tap and Shoes, if he continues to approve and, and he's had some spacing between races, Tap and Shoes makes a lot of sense as a Belmont Park, uh, Belmont Stakes long shot. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. All right, Matt. That's uh, that's that's where we are for our Belmont Stakes, our early look. Uh, that field of 10, folks, could change a little bit here as we uh, wait, uh, wait the Belmont stake. Certainly we, we saw scratches before the Derby and the Preakness. Hopefully all 10 of these run and, and maybe we'll uh, get a surprise entrant as well in the Belmont. Uh, Arabian line, if you're looking for him, we talked about him just a little bit. Looks like he'll run shorter, which makes a lot of sense because he was really the other speed trained by Bob Baffert as well. So probably going with National Treasure as the uh, lone speed now is their hopes in the Belmont. Matt, before we go, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Yeah, absolutely. We'll have one more uh, show next week, I think on Wednesday, Brian, where we'll uh, have our final thoughts about uh, the Belmont Stakes, maybe some wagers involving uh, the third leg of the Triple Ground, along with uh, we'll wade through all those grade ones and and come up with some races that we think are the most interesting, but certainly We'll also be talking about the Met Mile. Oh, we have to talk about the Met Mile, Matt. Was that a question or was that a statement? Oh, that was a statement. There you go. Yeah, the Met Mile. The Met Mile is looking like a good race. Uh, so uh, we talked a little bit about it last week. But yeah, the Ogden Phipps, the Acorn, the Just a Game, the Manhattan, all those big races. Uh, we got to take a look at those a little bit as we know the field's better next week. But uh, the Belmont Stakes was the focus this week and the main focus again next week. Folks, we sure appreciate you tuning in, tuning in every week to Horse Center. Go ahead, hit, uh, hit, hit subscribe, hit that notification button, leave a comment for Matt and I. Tell me why Matt's picks are always better than mine. I, I, I appreciate that. I only want to get better after 50 years of handicapping. Anyway, we'll see you right here next week on another edition of Horse Center.